Warning. This show is about the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are easily offended by the truth, then you need to keep listening. His return is drawing near. Smokehousestudios.net The Front Porch Show A unique blend of current events and what they might mean. Humbly seen through the eyes of God's Word, the Bible, in an old school front porch discussion with occasional guests, your input, and a guiding hand through Christ. Broadcasting from atop the front porch, it's SmokehouseStudios.net, The Front Porch Show. Now, carefully blending more smoke goodness in each and every soundbite, your host, Smokehouse. Well, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, friends, wherever you may be across the globe, across the United States, old Smokehouse with you once again on this Saturday night, August the 22nd. 2020. A lot of the exciting things that's been going on this week. But folks, tonight we are going to focus on Israel and this peace treaty. And uh, we're going to cover some more things going on. Right now the political theater is Trump is bad, Orange Man bad, tyranny and communism is good. The left is going to burn down every stitch of property that we have, beating, robbing, and killing until they can get their way. We'll cover that a little bit later on, but uh, uh, tonight we're going to dive into some important things, folks, and that is the the dealing with Israel. And before we get started, uh, I do have a few prayer requests. Uh, folks, my cousin last week, uh, she was involved in a water skiing accident and broke her femur uh, in the hip region in a skiing accident, which was a freak accident, but uh, she's in a lot of pain. Uh, luckily, they were able to get her to uh, the shore and to the hospital, and she had surgery, but she said she had to wait 20 hours before surgery, and it was just excruciating. I can only imagine. but. Uh, She's at home doing well, and uh, we just need uh, prayers for her for speedy recovery. And under the economic hardships, we know that uh, in these situations, uh, she will need that as well. And also, a special prayer for Brother Jerry. Again, uh, a few weeks ago, his brother-in-law passed away from cancer, and uh, uh, they've had the funeral now, and uh, things are starting to get back to normal, but uh, prayer for that family as well. So last week, we told you about the the deal of the century. We were talking about this peace deal with Israel and uh, how it did not look like uh, it was the seven-year peace treaty, and we would keep you updated as to uh, the progression and what we find out. And uh, no, this isn't the seven-year peace treaty. But this week, something very interesting has happened, along with last week when we were talking about the Israeli slash United Arab Emirates news, it's it's a whole lot bigger than the American press is reporting here. Because Trump actually does deserve a great deal of credit, and if the deal were reported accurately, he would get the credit. Now, this, this is truth, but this is kind of a, a bad thing for America should this deal escalate into a seven-year peace treaty because uh, we're going to be... Uh, a high percentage of responsibility here. And so we're going to reap the judgment from that. But to get you caught up, last week the United Arab Emirates agreed to start working with Israel in this deal. Israel, in return, they stopped the annexation in the West Bank, which today is known as Judea and Samaria, in, in... in preparation to to work on this peace deal. Now, I'm not saying that we got it wrong. And if we did get it wrong, well, then I'm going to apologize and repent for it right now. But uh, back under the Obama administration, when ISIS was rising up and consuming all of these nations that surrounded Israel, you know, back then, if you remember, we were talking about 
uh, all of these nations that were losing their sovereignty. Obama was sending in the Arabs to the radical Arabs to take over control so that they could put pressure around Israel and force them into a peace treaty, and that failed. That didn't work. Israel did not uh, take the bait and go into this, this peace treaty under the Obama administration. But Trump comes in and makes a deal of the century. Uh, Netanyahu, although I don't think Netanyahu is going to give up any land, it appears that uh, with uh, Benjamin Gantz now, working with Benjamin Netanyahu, Gantz, when he takes the reins in 18 months, uh, may be the one that could possibly divide up Israel's land. But as of right now, with the Arab Spring that rose under Obama, uh, we were thinking that um, they were going to try and do this and take Israel by force. And uh, they were unable to succeed. So not that we were wrong but maybe we weren't looking at it as we, as the whole picture here, because now here we see a peaceful resolution beginning to surface between the United Arab Emirates and other Arab nations to agree to work with Israel under a peaceful solution. And this is where we're going to start with tonight. But the issue here is a whole lot larger than that. And the American media, they've totally missed the bigger story here, and here's why. So let's, let's review. Remember when the United Arab Emirates and Israel decided, they publicly decided to have these relations in something that they're calling the Abraham Accord. Now, this is groundbreaking right now, and the countries have been privately collaborating for some time over this, and now they're willing to make this public. And what this means is, is that this nation is going to recognize the other. Israel is going to recognize the Arab Emirates, but the Arab Emirates are going to be recognizing Israel as a Israeli nation. Now, this is very important because we know under Obama, he was calling ISIS ISIL. Remember that? He was putting an L on it, ISIL. The L in ISIL stands for the Levant. Under the Ottoman Empire days, the area of Israel was basically known as Palestine. This is why today, when Israel became a nation in 1948, and David ben Guren signed the treaty that, that basically established Israel as a nation. In prophecy, that's a nation being born overnight. Prophecy of the dried bones, Israel was restored. Uh, that was given, that they changed the name back to Israel, and the Palestinians were like, no, that's our land. That was Palestine. When actually there is no such thing as a Palestine, okay? Because all of the Arab... Jews and the Arab Jews, they're still Jews. They have just been manipulated by man, per se, you know, through the years. Um, and under the diaspora, when Christ, or when God uh, cast the Jews out for thousands of years, and the Jews scattered all about the planet, you know, this also aided in uh, the Palestinians wanting to recognize themselves separate from the actual Jews. I don't want to confuse you here. I want to stay on topic of where we are today, but the Levant back during the Ottoman Empire, uh, the basically the definition of Levant is merely the fact we do not recognize Israel as a nation. And so under the Ottoman Empire, it was known as the Levant. That area of Israel we know today was known as Palestine, and Israel was never printed on any map. The area of Israel on the maps printed then were Palestine. So Israel gets established as a nation in 1948. And the Arab nations from day one of 48 have been wanting to conquer Israel and take it by force, not being successful. 
And uh, if we if we go into his, the prophecy of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, we see where God says once it's restored, it'll be a, a, a great nation. It'll have a great army. It's never going to be conquered again. And it hasn't been up until 2020 where we find ourselves today. But many people have come through the years and wanted to divide up Israel and give it to the Palestinians. We've seen it with with uh, all kind of presidents, uh, Carter, Clinton, Bush, you name it, okay? Obama and Trump being no different. However, now it appears that Trump is, is gaining some success because now, unlike others where there has been a forceful try, here we have a peaceful try. And they have been privately collaborating this union for quite some time now. So what this means is, is that now instead of recognizing that area that Israel is today as Palestine, the United Arab Emirates are now willing to recognize that area as Israel. They just want their pound of flesh. They want their section of it to be known as Palestine. And they're going to have embassies in this peace deal, okay? And they will have access to each other's phone and telecommunication networks. They're going to have access to aviation, commerce, tourism that's going to flow between the nations. So they're going to work in unison. Now, there's a gentleman here that says he grew up in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and we were not allowed to travel to Israel. And I have still never been there. And in our geography and history books, Israel was redacted. The pages were ripped out or blacked out, and maps did not have Israel. They either had black paint over the word Palestine glued on top, and the flag of Israel was blacked out. He said that in ninth grade, his class went to Greece for a field trip, and he remembers standing in the Agora at the base of the Acropolis in Athens. And our teacher pointed to all the flags of the world hanging above the Agora and asked if any of us could identify the white one with the blue stripes and the blue star. And none of us had ever seen it. And those redactions to textbooks are now going to go away. The United Arab Emirates will join Jordan and Egypt in recognizing Israel. Now, this is important. Because now what we have, we have Jordan, we have Egypt recognizing Israel. We remember back during Obama in Egypt when the Arab Spring took over Egypt and Mohammed Mercy was in power, slaughtering Christians and Jews. The people rose up and eventually took Mohammed Mercy out of power, the prophecy in Isaiah 19, the burden of Egypt. And General Sisi then took over the reins, and immediately when General Sisi took over the presidency of, of Egypt, began to start working in unison with Israel. And so back then, Egypt became a working nation with Israel along with Jordan. Now we have the United Arab Emirates. This week, now comes word that Bahrain and Oman will be following suit. Eventually, we could see Saudi Arabia also extend public recognition, though, like the uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia has been privately cooperative with Israel for some time now. And this gets to the larger, more important picture. The one of the America media here is missing. Because right now, there is a diplomatic dispute between Greece and Turkey over natural gas and drilling rights in the eastern Mediterranean. And Turkey has moved naval forces into Greece territory to secure Turkish drilling and the rights for the natural gas. And Greece is using diplomatic pressures to push Turkey out of its territorial waters. Now, three weeks ago, in the running up to this deal, or it becoming public, Israel sided with Greece in this dispute, joining Egypt. And Egypt, like we have been saying, has been at odds with Turkey since Turkey provided a safe haven to the Muslim Brotherhood. 
Remember when Mohammed Mercy was removed, General C.C. took power in Egypt, then exile was given to the Taliban and all of those uh, ISIS fighters into Turkey because Erdogan of Turkey, well, he wants to, to create and rise up the new caliphate, the modern-day caliphate, okay? He wants to restore the old ancient Ottoman Empire, which is going to, to come into further prophecy here we're going to go into in a moment. But the Muslim Brotherhood had come to power only to be forced out via a coup led by General Sisi. Now, as I had said, Sisi and Israel have been strengthening their diplomatic ties, just as Turkey has been working to strengthen its ties with Syria and Iran. Keep this in the back of your mind when we go to Ezekiel 38. And now Israel joined Egypt in supporting Greece's claims against Turkey, putting the majority of eastern Mediterranean nations in Greece's camp. Greece, I guess you could say, would would be considered a European region. All right? Now, Oman and Bahrain, they may also be going public with a pre-existing private diplomatic relation with Israel. This is signaling the formation of a Middle East alliance of countries uh, allied with Israel against an Iranian, Russian, Turkish axis that backs the Muslim Brotherhood and various Shiite terror groups. Now, there is, if you will, a crescent axis of terror that arches from Syria over and around Turkey and parts of Iraq to Iran, with the possible coming inclusion of Qatar. It's now being matched by a coalition from Egypt to Israel to Jordan and to the rest of the Middle East. So basically what we are witnessing here, we are witnessing the rise of an Israeli-Arab alliance with diplomatic agreements stretching beyond trade to actually containing a growing threat from Turkey, Russia, Syria, and Iran. That has what has been, been being missed in the media coverage and is probably the most significant foreign policy accomplishments to come out of the Trump administration. It's happening right before our eyes, folks, while so many of us are being distracted by post office conspiracies. We'll touch on the post office conspiracy here in a little bit. But what has just happened this week now that the United Arab Emirates have fallen in suit to uh, work or at least recognize Israel. Now we have Bahrain and Oman willing to do the same. Interestingly, though, this week, Sudan has risen up and said, under no circumstances are we going to recognize Israel as anything. That is Palestinian land. We will not be joining this union to recognize Israel in this new alliance that is forming. Sudan, man, why is this so important? Let's go to Ezekiel 38. We keep returning, you know, back to Ezekiel 38 in these times. Each time something new surfaces in this venture here. But what is so fascinating, let's go to Ezekiel 38. In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel is prophesying the prophecy of the dried bones, where this is just the The restoration, you know, God showed Ezekiel these valleys of dried bones and said, you prophesy to these dried bones and tell them to get up. And uh, he did, and they got up, and then God started putting skin back on them and restored them back to their nation. This was the prophecy of the dried bones of God restoring Israel, which we believe has taken place in 1948, right after World War II. Uh, Interestingly enough, when Hitler had um, massacred all the Jews in the ovens. All the bones were taken out to where they had valleys cut in the 
fields out there, open trenches of mass graves, and they were just pouring all the Jewish bones into. Could that have been where God took Ezekiel in the Spirit to show him that very section of land at that time? Something to consider. But anyway, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Set thy face against Russia. Magog today is Russia. The chief prince of Meshech and Tabul, and prophesy against them. Meshech and Tabul today is the area of Turkey. So we have Russia and Turkey in this alliance against Israel here in Ezekiel 38. Verse 3, And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Ogog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tabul, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring forth uh, all thine armies, horses and horsemen, all of thy clothes with all the sorts of armor, even a great company with buckler shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, which is today Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya will come with Iran, Russia, and Turkey. Hold that thought. Gomer, which is part of the ancient Gomer then, is today Turkey and a little bit of the Ukraine. And all of his bands in the house of Togarma. Togarma would be another section of Turkey. And of the north quarters, and all of his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare thyself. And thou and the company that thou art assembled unto thee in the great garden to them. And after many days thou shalt be visited, in latter years thou shalt come into the land brought by all of these things, brought forth out of these nations. So all of these groups are going to be coming with Russia, Turkey, and Iran, including two little small areas that will join, known as Cush and Put. Cush and Put will be joining Russia, Turkey, and Iran in the alliance to come against Israel. Who is Cush and Put today? Today, Cush and Put, actually Put would be the area of Libya, which Ezekiel uh, noted here. But the area of Cush, my friends, is Ethiopia and Sudan. That's right. And here we have these alliances that are now uniting with Israel, all except for Turkey, Iran, Russia, and now Sudan says they are not going to join in this unity. They're going to join with Turkey, Russia, and Persia, Iran. So we have the alliances that Ezekiel said would form that are now forming to come against Israel. Now we're having nations unite that are going to be siding with Israel in this deal. Oman, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia has been privately cooperating with Israel for some time. We move on into verse 13 of Ezekiel 38, where it says that Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take peril, to carry away silver and gold? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Lord, In the day when my people of Israel dwelleth in safety, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north past, thou, many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, and the company in a mighty army. And they shall come against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall be in the latter days that I will bring thee against my land 
that the heathen may know me when I shall sanctify in thee, O God, before their eyes. So you, you, can, you can read on through Ezekiel 38 and 39, but this is, the, this is the battle of Armageddon that many talk about. Let's go back to Sheba and Dedan. Today, the area of Sheba and Dedan is known as Saudi Arabia. Tarshish today is the uh, European area. Many people believe that the young lions of Tarshish is representing America since we are such a young nation right now and we were the offspring of England, of Europe. So many people think when it mentions the young lions of Tarshish, it's actually referencing America here. Now, whether that is or not remains to be seen. But as for right now, let's just act on the principle that that could possibly be plausible. So this week, we are now seeing Arab nations joining in in alliance with Israel, yet the ones that Ezekiel prophesied would not are now speaking out and saying, we're not going to be a part of this alliance. Yet, Ezekiel says that Sheba and Dedan, which is Saudi Arabia, Europe, and possibly America are going to be siding with Israel on this alliance and asking, whoa, 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 what's, what's what's your goal here? Well, what do you... What are you trying to do? Saudi Arabia, Europe, and America is going to be like, now, wait a minute, you Arab nations that aren't signing up for this deal. What's your purpose? Are you coming to destroy Israel? Are you coming to take Israel by force? That hasn't really happened yet, that portion of it. But what I wanted to share with you this week is this deal of the century that that Trump has brokered with Israel— is not the seven-year peace treaty. It is not the tribulation peace treaty that we're all watching for here. But what this is is the beginning of that, and I'll explain why. When we move into Daniel chapter 9, it's the most popular verse, 27, where it says, and this is concerning the last day, peace agreement, if you would, 927. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consumption and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So basically, There is going to be a covenant that will be the seven-year covenant here. But this covenant is going to be formed by many for one week, which is seven years. The covenant of many. Now, when I opened up the program, I said, we may have been looking at this wrong a few years back, we were thinking the covenant of many would be the entire globe. You know, could the United Nations step in and then the whole world work this treaty with Israel only to break it three and a half years into it? We were just going on assumption by what we were seeing at that time. But now, the closer we get to the last days, let's keep in mind now the travesties. The desolation that's happening to the globe with the riots, the unrest, the division, the hatred. Globally, this uh, disease and pestilence, all the signs of the last days, earthquakes, volcanoes. We're seeing everything escalate. And now at the same time, We're seeing a very new transition, one that we have never yet seen in this Israeli peace deal, and that is Arab nations now coming to the table in agreement. So the question here is, this covenant with many that's going to be taking place with Israel to start the tribulation, 
Did we get it wrong by thinking the United Nations was going to be the one brokering this? Could this covenant of many be what we're actually beginning to see? These Arab nations like the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Oman. Is this the covenant beginning to start, the covenant of many, that's going to begin the tribulations? Is out of this deal of the century going to come the actual seven-year peace deal once all of these smaller Arab areas unite to work with Israel? That is a possibility, and I say that because... I say that because look at the ones that are jumping ship, Sudan, Kush and Put region, Libya, jumping ship, joining with Turkey, Russia, and Iran. It's interesting times that we live in here today, folks. Interesting times is all you can say. But this is the latest uh, in the deal of the century that's happened this week. Now, folks, when we get back... We've been talking to you. Stephen Benoon had been sharing info with us on uh, some meteor debris that's coming in around September. Well, we've got something to share with you folks that uh, is pretty fascinating. We know that every time our government is running a drill for something, then it always happens, whatever they're drilling for. (laughs) when we come back in September they're going to be running a meteor impact drill and we're going to give you all the information on that we're going to share a long interview from Mike around the world with some interesting detail we'll be right back right after Smokehouse that. to talk to Smokehouse dial 641-552-9354 that number once again 641-552-9354 and enter access code 252380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. <laughs> it's just a mask, you guys. Don't be a jerk for the greater good. (laughs) It's just a vaccine, you guys. Don't be a jerk. It's for the greater good. (laughs) In four months, the U.S. was transformed into an obedient socialist country. Government dictated what events are acceptable to attend. Violent protests that instill fear are okay. But church services, family funerals, and patriotic celebrations are dangerous. (laughs) And you bought it without a fight. (laughs) Standing in a graduation line is a safety hazard. Small businesses were forced to close, but crowds to support the corporate money machine at Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot are okay. (laughs) Come on! It's just a mask and safety precautions. (laughs) How about a little hush money? (laughs) Here's $2,400 that we stole out of your paycheck in the first place. Enjoy. Buy something with it from a big corporation. Cash is dirty. We can't give change. There's a coin shortage. Use your card. (laughs) In four months, they convince you to use a traceable card for everything. (laughs) In less than four months, government closed public schools, then restructured education under the guise of public safety. In less than four months, our government demonstrated how easily people assimilate to guidelines that have no scientific premise whatsoever when you are fearful. In less than four months, our government successfully instilled fear in a majority of the population in America that allows them to control every aspect of your life, including what you eat, where you go, who you see, and your toilet paper. And the most dangerous and terrifying part, people are not afraid of the government who removed their freedom. They're afraid of their neighbors, family, and friends. (laughs) And they hate those that won't comply. It's absolutely terrifying to me that so many people don't question authority. They are willing to surrender their critical thinking skills and independence. They just gave up without thinking, without a fight. Do you know what's coming next? It's just a vaccine. Come on, it's for the greater good. (laughs) 
Wait until you're told that you can't enter any store or business without proof of the COVID-19 vaccine. Wait until you can't go to public events or get on a plane without proof of receiving the vaccine. Don't think it's possible? <laughs> well, you already allowed the government to say when you can go outside, where you're allowed to go and accepted a new unproven digital education for your kids in the last hundred days. You followed blindly because you were told to do so. You're kidding yourself. Think the mass behavior won't be repeated with a vaccine or whatever the next step is. <laughs> I don't follow politics. I don't care about that stuff. I don't think about it. Six million Jewish people were exterminated in Germany because 97% of the population cowered to populist control. Nobody wanted to think about it. It's easier just to ignore it. But that couldn't happen here in America, right? <laughs> they got you without a thought, without a fight. Just like France, just like Russia, just like China. Welcome, comrade. Oh, that's right, folks. That's exactly what it is. Let me share with you a little bit of information. Did you know that 2,300 years ago, long before Islam, the Arabs discovered that forcing people to cover their nose and mouths broke their will and individuality, and it depersonalized them. It made them submissive. And then Islam turned it into the woman's symbol of submission to Allah, the man owner of the harem and the king. Modern psychology explains it. Without faith, we do not exist as independent beings. The child looks in the mirror between the ages of two and three and is discovered as an independent being. The mask is being or beginning of deleting individuality and he who does not know his history is condemned to repeat it. Author Terry Garpo. Carpo. So, folks, they know. This is ancient technology, ancient knowledge, fallen angel knowledge they are using to control the masses, to indoctrinate and to remove your self-esteem, your individuality, so that you will follow the crowd at chow time, and it's working. I still refuse to wear a mask, but it's, it's working on the masses. So what exactly does all of this mean? Folks, I know we have seen a lot of uh, Klein Smith, the lawyer that was involved in this Russia Gate, Russia hoax uh, has pled guilty and has received five years of prison. He's he's communicating. All oh, Brendan Clapper and all of them, Hillary, they're going to be uh, they're going to be going to Gitmo. Well, I don't know. I'm not saying if they are, or if they're not. But what I am saying is that the, the, the globalist beast is rising. They're taking away your sovereignty, your rights, and you're just sitting back patiently letting them do so. They're burning down our cities, and we do not stop it. Israel is forming this alliance now with Arab nations working toward the peace treaty. At the same time, all of this is going on, and we don't recognize it. And now we're going into slavery and captivity. Now, again, we had Stephen Denoon sharing with us in past shows information that we have a meteor debris field that is coming over the earth, and we could possibly receive impact sometime in September going into October. Now, Stephen Benoon's credibility is, is positive because he told us of the first meteor debris coming between March and June, and we actually did see that. We saw impacts. We saw fireballs exploding in the sky. 
And that all was plausible. It happened. And so now we're being told they're coming a second wave. And between September and October, he said, the entire planet's going to know that we have a problem in outer space. Now, I, I have no idea what that's going to mean. But it tells me that we are probably are going to have a, a somewhat of a significant impact somewhere. Uh, and the whole world is going to, to see it. They're not going to be able to cover it up with the IEDs, explosions that went off like the meteorite that hit outside of Nigeria this past spring, and they covered it up by saying, oh, it was just IEDs they found that went off in the process of trying to destroy them. Well, some interesting information has surfaced with uh, NASA and scientists that are running a meteor impact drill. Check this out. On November 4th, 2016, the simulation began. During this simulation, they find an object that is due to hit Earth on September 20th, 2020. Initially, this object had a 2% chance to hit, but later, they recalculated it to a 100% chance to hit. Let's read this together. This is from an official government website, jpl.nasa.gov. Quote, What would we do if we discovered a large asteroid on course to impact Earth? While highly unlikely, that was the high-consequence scenario discussed by a at an October 25th NASA FEMA tabletop exercise in El Segunda, California. The third in a series of exercises hosted jointly by NASA and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The simulation was designed to strengthen the collaboration between the two agencies, which have administration direction to lead the U.S. response. It's not a matter of if, but when. We will deal with such a situation, said Thomas Zerbuchin, Associate Administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington. But unlike any other time in our history, we now have the ability to respond to an impact threat through continued observations, predictions, response planning, and mitigation. The exercise provided a form for the planetary science community to show how it would collect, analyze, and share data about a hypothetical asteroid predicted to impact Earth. Emergency managers discussed how that data would be used to consider some of the unique challenges an asteroid impact would present for preparedness response and public warning. It is critical to exercise these kinds of low probability but high consequence disaster scenarios, FEMA Administrator Craig Fugate said. By working through our emergency response plans now, we will be better prepared if and when we need to respond to such an event. Exercise attendees included representatives from NASA, FEMA, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Department of Energy's National Laboratories, the U.S. Air Force, and the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. The exercise simulated a possible impact four years from now, a fictitious asteroid imagined to have been discovered this fall with a 2% probability of impact with Earth on September 20th, 2020. The simulated asteroid was initially estimated to be between 300 and 800 feet in size, with the possibility of making impact anywhere along a long swath of Earth, including a narrow band of area that crossed the entire United States. In the fictitious scenario, observers continued to track the asteroid for three months using ground-based telescope observations, and the probability of impact climbed to 65%. Then, the next observations had to wait until four months later due to the asteroid's position relative to the sun. Once observations could resume in May 2017, the impact probability jumped to 100%. By November 2017, it was simulated that the predicted impact would occur somewhere in a narrow band across Southern California or just off the coast in the Pacific Ocean. While mounting a deflection mission to move the asteroid off its collision course had been simulated in previous tabletop exercises, this particular exercise was designed so so that the time to impact was too short for a deflection mission to be feasible. To pose a great future challenge to emergency managers faced with the mass evacuation of the metropolitan Los Angeles area. Scientists from JPL, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Sandia National Laboratory, and the Aerospace Corporation presented predicted impact footprint models, population displacement estimates, information on infrastructure that would be affected, as well as other data that could realistically be known at various points throughout the exercise scenario. The high degree of initial uncertainty coupled with the relatively long impact warning time made this scenario unique and especially challenging for emergency managers, said FEMA National Response Coordination Branch Chief Leviticus A. Lewis. It is quite different from preparing for an event with a much shorter timeline, such as a hurricane.
blockchain, attendees considered ways to provide accurate, timely, useful information to the public, while also addressing how to refute rumors and false information that could emerge in the years leading up to the hypothetical impact. These exercises are invaluable for those of us in the asteroid science community responsible for engaging with FEMA on this natural hazard, said NASA Planetary Defense Officer Lindley Johnson. We receive valuable feedback from emergency managers at these exercises about what information is critical for their decision making, and we take that into account when we exercise how we would provide information to FEMA about a predicted impact. NASA provides expert input to FEMA about the asteroid impact hazard through the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. NASA and FEMA will continue to conduct asteroid impact exercises and intend to expand participation in future exercises to include additional representatives from local and state emergency management agencies and the private sector. So that's it. That's the end of the article. What do you guys think of all this? Do you think something is going to happen in relation to an asteroid impact? Do you think they did this simulation because they have some sort of information that they're hiding from us? Do you believe Revelation 8 is going to happen in our lifetime? Please leave a comment below and tell everybody how you feel about these things. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that like button. And until next time, thank you all for watching, and God bless you all. So we're not uh, fear tacting here. We're just trying to explain to you that... Uh, during September 9-11, 2001, they were running a drill simulating airplanes crashing into a building. The Aurora, Colorado shooting in the movie theater, they were running a simulation drill of a shooter in a movie theater. The Sandy Hook shooting, they were running a drill the very same day simulating a school shooting on and on it goes and now they're running an actual meteor impact drill on september the 20th is there going to be a meteor to impact somewhere on the 20th i have no idea but we see them under the meteor debris impacts that we were told of back between march and june how they clamped us down under this covid guys and I'm wondering now that they're clamping down harder, forcing more mask uses, talking about another shutdown, if by September that doesn't get worse because they really are expecting a meteor impact. Well, I, I know that, uh, you know, playing a lot of interviews from, from different programs, uh, basically I'm just riding the coattail of these other programs, and, I, and that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, but tonight, I have got uh, a prior engagement that I need to meet. And um, Mike was on the program with uh, Pastor Paul this week uh, talking about this very thing, and uh, they covered a whole lot more, uh, not only the volcanic, the earthquakes that's happened this week, they just covered a whole variety of things in this interview, and I want to share this with you, and uh, as soon as this interview is over, we'll cover a few more things, and then I have got to get out of here. I apologize, but did want to uh, put something up, but this is a fairly lengthy interview, but pay close attention to what they discussed in this interview. Really good. We got a volcano blowing its stack, uh, Mount Sin Singabung, and uh, 6.8, 6.9 earthquakes yesterday in Indonesia as well. Malaysia, 6.6. We had an asteroid two nights ago that wasn't even listed on the chart that just barely missed the Earth by 1,800 miles. The closest asteroid without hitting the Earth ever recorded. Is this what you're talking about, Mike? Absolutely. We have a couple more coming, too, that uh, nobody sees. For some reason, nobody can see it, but, you know, I'll go ahead and tell it. We have two more coming. We got They'll two see more? Wait, well, nobody saw it coming. You know right now there's two more coming that nobody can see? Oh, yeah. That's what they say. Nobody can see it. You're letting us know right now there's two more. How interesting, isn't it? Yes. Uh, is that to keep us from panicking, Mike? Uh, to keep us uh, from getting, no, don't get freaked out? 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because if you know beforehand these things are coming, you won't, you know, a lot of people these days are losing their nerve for some reason. And we have to make sure that doesn't happen uh, within us, you know. I have some very strong beliefs when it comes to uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, incidences, catastrophes, vaccines, you just name it. I have, um, I, I, my approach to those things are a bit different, right? And so I, to panic is a waste of time. It really is a waste of time. But to um, always think soberly about things is to, you know, continue to do our work as time progresses. We really live, Pastor Paul, in a very, it's a bad time for the world, but it's a beautiful time for the saints. Amen. I mean, I agree with that. I mean, because people ask me, how can you be so excited and be so happy with when knowing that the end of time is coming? Because that means the coming of Jesus Christ is coming. This world is not my home. I'm sorry. So, Mike, uh, asteroids are coming. What about the clusters? Have we got any new updates on those asteroid clusters that you've been talking about? Except that the spread of it is a bit further than we thought. And there's an interesting date on um, the radar. Uh, very interesting year, I'll say it is. Very interesting year. In fact, it's, it's a um, it's very dark year that's uh, coming. It's a couple of years away. It's a very dark year. Um, I, I'm, you know what? This supersedes um, quite a few things, which is why they're rushing. In the world, they're rushing everything, as you can tell. Uh, alliances... In their minds, alliances have to be made because it's going to take a coordinated uh, type of effort to secure certain things on the earth. And I believe that people will see this more and more. You're going to see evidence of this more and more. They're going to start moving things all over the place. So everybody get ready for that. When you say they're going to start moving things all over the place, Mike, what, what, do, you, uh, what do you mean? Well, Pastor, if, if any event... We're about to uh, overtake the earth. First, they would prepare, notify, or, or well, prepare the personnel. They would have to have a proper count of the personnel. They would have to uh, secure. Then they would start taking top level officials, and they would take them um, about uh, about a year, a year and a half before the event. They would take those people out of the picture so they can acclimate to uh, these protected conditions. Then they would redirect the grid, right? Uh, they would start to redirect the grid uh, uh, resources, you name it, uh, down to these places and stock them. And when they stop with food, that means a diversion. That means we get less food. We get less of a variety. What? Uh, because most of it will be shipped in other places. Now, in 2015, many people began to notice that farms were involved by the government. They didn't know why. So they're shipping uh, some of these farms... Um, nobody can get close to uh, unless you have clearance to fly uh, above them. But um, there is a clearly a food diversion. Uh, food is going into different locations. Um, and I know that we sit at the precipice of war, but many of your uh, high-level individuals and they're absolutely working together, coordinating in very strange ways. So, um, yeah, that would be one of the first indications. Next, you would see a diversion of uh, the, at the very last stage would be the odds and ends. Some some um, uh, uh, individuals that they would uh, rally and open up the doors to, you know, that they would decide they need. And you would notice, um, you know, individuals on strange assignment, uh, people dying, prominent people dying. And, and ladies and gentlemen, when you see prominent people, People die. You can't always believe they're dead. That just means they're going to be taken out of the loop of the public. That doesn't mean they're dead. Um, that's a good cover to take somebody and and put them into a uh, where they won't be known anymore into a different uh, you know place altogether. Communications that will be another big um, uh, another big one. What they'll do is they'll augment our communication. I mean beyond belief. And then all of a sudden, something will happen to the services. Um, you know, some uh, strange event, whatever the case may be. But and that is to have civilians. Often they take civilians. Uh, civilians work on small projects, corporations. They perfect things. Once they perfect them, right, often that technology, they perfect it, is bought out, is put under a, a, a trademark, a copyright of some sort. Something happens. Then, of course, they own the technology. So... Um, they often do this, have civilians gather 
and, and create just about everything. And then they take what is viable, what is good, and they use it for themselves. Uh, they don't lift the finger, kind of like um, Microsoft built Microsoft. They didn't build Microsoft. They stole everybody else's technology beginning with uh, Xerox. What? And so um, that's how that works. They, they're, they're good thieves, is, is, or what they are. Um, they don't really build anything. They just... Um, they just intimidate folks who are incredibly talented and smart and um, uh, have great ingenuity. And they either buy them out or threaten them or, be, you know, something like that. And then they end up owning the technology. So sort of what they did to, to Nikolai Tesla, right? I mean, just kind of steal it or maybe kill you. Of course. Of course. Well, he was, he was Nikola Tesla was uh, incredibly dangerous because his ideas were... He had uh, esoteric ideas mixed with technology that absolutely worked. And so if you have a guy with esoteric knowledge, um, not, not the weird stuff, but, but just esoteric knowledge, with uh, that coupled with uh, great engineering skills, then the people are more prone to believe what he says. And so they had to quickly um, you know, put him in a category where nobody else could actually get to him. And uh, so you know, he kind of faded with time, broke. He didn't have any money or anything else. Unfortunately, that's what happens in this world. If you have a heart for the people, you're going to lose in the end every single time. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we're coming to a point where things are, you know, they're just not reversible. And um, everybody's working at breakneck pace to avoid uh, what they know is coming. And again, if they knew a calamity was coming, there would be um, strange things happening in the earth. I I remembered 15 years ago, we had a conversation about the elections. If something were to happen with the elections, they would have to put public figures that everybody knew out in front of everybody to keep people involved politically. They have to keep people. If everybody right now were to say, I'm not going to buy into this political stuff and turn their backs, it would mess up their whole plan. Because believe it or not, they need the faith of the people towards something they're doing. Right? They need people's worship, and, and um, they do everything to constantly receive people's worship. And believe it or not, everything goes, everything goes back to the spiritual realm. Uh, you can look at this a thousand different ways. It goes back to the spiritual realm. And they do everything for worship, from children, uh, from indoctrination in the education system, to scaring people with vaccines and shots and you name it. Um, but they ultimately want people's worship, so they will participate the ceremonies and become a part of the change of the world. The world cannot change unless the people start, um, um, unless the people encapsulate or harbor house iniquity. And they already know this. Nothing will come unless the children or, or the people of earth become iniquitous. All the leaders could be terribly dark. They don't set the pace of the world. We do. And so what they do is they often convince us to fight against each other, to harbor iniquity and everything else. And if we believe what they say, they're certainly above the Lord's words. Well, then we're giving the beast strength and power and his authority because we're giving up our position in the earth to stand against it. Folks, it's Mike around the world with us tonight. And he's uh, he's on fire now. Um And uh, let me just ask you a question. You bring up the word worship. They need our worship. I I guess you were quoting some right then just out of Revelation. And they're going to make an image to the beast. The beast wants to be worshipped. Lucifer gives power to the beast. And the beast gets this sidekick, the uh, false prophet. Can we, I know in the deep state uh, webinar that we got coming up, Mike, you're one of the key speakers in that. And You've told us you're going to talk about um, the serpent brotherhood, the brotherhood of the serpent. Can you give us can you give us a little something on it? Maybe not not break the whole thing loose, but because I know you can't because of censorship, but you can during the webinar. Can you give us some idea? Is that part of the worship you're talking about? The wanting to be worshipped? Oh, yeah. Worship, by the way, a a simple definition of worship coming from the base of the Kano Greek uh, would be voluntary observance, which which means it would be a person uh, admiring something on their own. They work very hard at this. Um, So when any of us, and and it really is one of those kick in the teeth type definitions because you realize, boy, there are lots of things we admire on our own. But um, when we do this, when we lift something up, 
uh, in our hearts. It is worshipped by us. And there are so many things in the world that have been modeled. Uh, everything we do in life, fastball has been carefully orchestrated. I mean carefully orchestrated. Even to the way a shopping center is laid out. Uh, marketing is a, they had another word for marketing and it is witchcraft. Marketing causes a person to have a desire where no desire previously existed. So it is manipulation of the mind, right? That's what marketing is. And in this world we bought into the entire idea, thank God for the end times, because this is when our elect Delusion, our delusion, the saints, right? We, we, we're not in a delusion. We're, we're kind of sleeping. This is when we begin to wake up. Some things will be very distasteful to us. Uh, some things won't. Nevertheless, we're going to live by truth. Because in truth, by the words of our Lord, that all of us have, have bought into the idea of these things on earth. Not one of us has perfected our lives, but it's going to wake us all up. And the more we are, are have that ability to say, well, I'm going to choose Christ anyway, uh, those are going to be the ones that really stand up at the end times. Uh, but everything we do in life has been carefully orchestrated so that we will worship uh, the beast. And by the way, Satan himself couldn't do a thing to us, right? So he creates an, uh, a copy of himself in the earth. And he gives the, the, the beast in the earth looks just like Satan, uh, save for, you know, the, the, the count of horns. And so he gives the beast his power, his seat, and great authority. Now, this is the Bible saying great authority. So we know it's not, um, you know, some, some illusionary authority. He has great authority. Well, the beast, Satan can't do anything in the spiritual realm because he's been stripped of certain spiritual powers. He only has a power of influence. That's all he can do to us. And, but he made a physical copy of himself on the earth through people. Right? Because it be from the sea. The sea was explained, I believe, in Revelation 17 to be the many peoples, uh, 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 the many peoples of earth, nations, and all these other things. So the beast is us, the people of earth, who believe in the ideologies that Satan has developed over time. And so that is, this beast system is, uh, was probably a little bit further than we think, and it certainly is a lot deeper than we think, but it's working. And right now, this spiritual side of things is being hidden as, as just like this character, the the um, uh, Anubis, right? It would shock people to know that most of their leaders have walked with Anubis. And we're not talking about Anubis with a human head either. We're talking about Anubis with a dog head, the, the full no! manifestation of Anubis. And... Um, you know, there are things like this that happen all the time with them. So it, it's a little deeper than what people suspect or realize. And, and again, most of the saints, because we are at liberty to believe what we want to believe when we want to believe it, um, we have an issue with faith sometimes because we believe how we were raised. We believe that is home to us, right? They made um, what they taught us home. And so the Lord's been breaking that the entire time. In fact, here is one little thing that this ideology we have of home, home betrayed most of the saints. Most of the saints have a story in their lives where home betrayed them. Right. So that the Lord could break this ideology of this false home that we have, because our home is eternal. We, we have to still remember that we're royalty being taught to take over eternity. And I, I guess a lot of people aren't aware of that, but they're actually being trained for something. This is not our paradise. We're passers by. We're going to be out of here, you know, soon. We're walking right through this place. But in the meanwhile, Satan is busy trying to, you know, cause us to believe that this is it. And when this happens, we can't see anything. We, we create a blindness. And the Lord is breaking that blindness, which is why a lot of people, they, there are things we want to have, but the Lord says, no, you're not going to have it. And there, there are some of us who, if we had certain uh, things in our lives, we would corrupt ourselves. And the Lord's saying no, especially in these times. He's saying, nope, you're not going to do it. I won't lose you. You, you can't be rich. Yet. I'm not going to lose you to riches. I'm not going to lose you to this. I'm not going to lose you to that. Some people want relationships. He's saying, nope, because if you have a relationship, you'll no longer worship me, your whole heart, mind, everything else beyond that. So, so according to what we can handle, we will have, but we're being built up 
in faith beyond the level I think uh, even what we're aware of because when the spiritual manifestations begin to spill out on the surface of the earth I believe that will be at a spiritual level that all of us will house the Holy Spirit almost perfectly and what I mean by that is that we'll see with a with a Christ mindset right where he is our reality and all of this is subject to change as it really is but uh, you know the, these these stories these times that we live in are unmistakable they are deceitful, highly deceitful. But um, one of the greatest things that's happening is that you have all these people running around on the earth. And there's actually a show out now. I think it's on Netflix. It might be on Amazon Prime. I can't remember. The Hunted, which is a horrible film. Uh, it's a series about hunting uh, Christians and Jews, and, and uh, it's a horrible thing. Let me ask you a question. You talk about this beast, this, uh, this satanic worship, this uh, almost like a reptilian situation. Now, this is, this is the first time ever our, our nation is going through a convention virtually. Um, and is this by design? And how do we even know? Because you're saying a lot of the global elitists are going to go underground. They're going to disappear. They might tell us that some of them are dead, uh, but they're not, you know, that kind of thing. Can they also do, I've heard of Manchurian candidates, but are we looking at something here? I, I don't know what Joe Biden did tonight. I didn't watch his speech. I don't know what he might have said or did he do okay. But do they have technology now to where they can make you sound different and, and appear different? Uh, Pastor Paul, I, I know that uh, people think we, we're st we still have romper room technology, but that's just not the case. That, that really isn't the case. I mean, let me give you an idea. Seventy percent of uh, right now, 70 percent of the UFOs or the strange objects people see in the sky, 70 percent is probably ours. We have drones that can... Um, well, forget about hypersonic. A long time ago, they found out that certain laws and principles uh, were in effect for this this reality, right? And what I mean by that is, let's just say this this frequency of existence. And then, so what they did was they went to a higher one. Now, we're not talking about shifting a person into another dimension. That's not what we're talking about. It's something quite simple, and it has to do with uh, light and sound. So if you go be outside of these barriers... Well, guess what? Time no longer affects you like it normally would. And so literally things can fast forward and rewind um, as far as time travel. It's something similar to that, but we're not talking about going back 50 years. We're talking about slowing down time, like being in a bubble. And it's all technology. There's nothing. There's no, uh, there's no magic about it. It's all technology. Uh, so yeah, Brock's giving me a, a, an update. He's saying that at the virtual convention, the D in the DNC has an upside down pentagram inside of it. Uh, I haven't seen that. Uh, Brock, you saw that though, didn't you? Well, look, we understand that they removed God out of their platform back in 2008, and then they had to put it back in because uh, there was such an outcry. But um, the God of this world, the beast worship is here. And I think that they're going to use every, as you say, Mike, every sublineal, every technology, every symbol, uh, and they desire our worship. They need our worship. And you talked about relocation. You know, did you know you were on the air last Thursday and talked about forced Isolation and 34 minutes after we got off the air, Bloomberg article broke on Drudge of forced isolation that, that the governments of the world and scientists are saying the only way to cure COVID-19 is to use forced isolation if anybody gets sick. And they started doing it the very next day in New Zealand. Mike, is it coming our way? Oh, yeah. Well, they have to keep pace also. Um, actually, believe it or not, some conversations make it easier on them to go ahead and spill the beans, right? But, um, uh, yeah, they're going to do this anyway. I, I think that the, this end result 
is not you know most people look at the end time special oh, by the way i i when i was coming in i heard you say something about the end times right you said uh, i think you asked the people were we in the end times yes right yes are we in the end times can i just read one thing just one thing for all the any anybody who's out there and down if we're in the end times that's just one thing just it's very small you ready, I'm ready. here it goes hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Now we're talking about, it says, God, who has sundry times in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken of us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So, so in other uh, words, we've been in the last days since Christ. There you go. We've been there for a long time. I think one of the issues is this. If a child is born in jail, the child will not call it jail. They're going to call it home. Wow. So here we are. This is the end times. If if Jesus was the beginning of the end times, 2,000 years later, with all the advancement, Israel being rebirthed as a nation, all of the warfare, all of the technology, all of the satanic rituals and and pagan old pagan rituals now being brought back into mainstream different. You know, the, everything you think of Mike, we're running out of time. Matter of fact, folks, Brock's going to play this. We just tonight we're launching our brand new new apocalypse app, the new apocalypse app. It's it's for your phone. Doesn't matter if it's an iPhone or Android, it will work. Or you can put it on your laptop as a website. You can go there on your laptop, your iPad, or your desktop. It works on both Windows and Mac. Brock, tell them how they can get it. Mike, uh, it's it's a God ideal. The Lord said you needed to put it out there. It's it's the apocalypse watch now. We're on a watch now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. And, uh, you know, it's a good idea to have that uh, server because lots of crunches uh, will come. I, I, I really still don't believe people understand the gravity of, of the changes that have taken place in the world. For example, overseas, as soon as um, as soon as the uh, UAE began to go forward, and now they're going to be sharing technology uh, that the USA has and Israel has, automatically we have a stronger opposition. I mean, instant opposition uh, to what's going on. Many, many, the, the, it's going to be a, 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 a consuming fire in the Middle East, and it will only uh, grow larger. What? That will ultimately spill over to us. Wait a minute, and, Mike. Um, Isn't it going to be peace and safety? I mean, I mean, they're, 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 they're signing covenants with Israel. Is Aren't we going to have peace and safety and kumbaya? Yeah, that's an eruptor. Um, but, um, well, we all know this. As soon as they, as as, um, the, as soon as they began to talk about it, Pastor Paul, the, the, I'm talking about the the uh, radio channel was high. Um, you know, even this weekend, some uh, some EAMs were were uh, going out and everything else, and so we are in the in the crooks of a massive change here. And what I mean by massive change is um, the USA. And some of the other nations, they're trying their best to get positioned and get the, you're going to notice equipment positioning, right? Uh, Keep your eyeballs on equipment positioning because they understand and they know exactly what's about to happen. There are certain countries that cannot be stopped. They cannot stop China. They cannot stop Russia. They can't do this. Russia and China have co-op development, uh, arms development, and they have some weapons that um, they are just extraordinary, right? So we have to keep pace with them. Do they have technology, Mike, that's, that's better than ours? China? Don't let China fool you. China... Already, China has been intercepted a few times. People have lost their lives trying to see what China has been developing. China gives examples of their technology by having their technology fly circles around our technology sometimes, right? And there are a few occasions when China sent technology directly to the United States flew in our airspace. Everybody said they were UFOs, but they were not. Um, Everybody knows what they were. And then they went right back over to China again. So they're trying to force our hand because we have similar technology. In other words, what I'm telling you is some of the stuff that we know about, you might as well think of that like a Model T Ford. There are things that we have 
and that can absolutely undo all flesh on the face of this earth. Uh, of course, they're not going to pull half that stuff out, I hope, but um, that potential is there. Right now, there are weapons platforms in space, and, and with weapons platforms in space, with, um, you know, with all that technology up there, it, it could be a real problem down here. What they're unsure of is cooperation between Iran and, and China and Russia. They don't know how deep that cooperation goes. And now Turkey has certainly been on the phone with Iran, to, uh, Russia, China. And so now we have we, we also have uh, uh, some people who have jumped the ship in Africa, very important places in Africa that are no longer they're not they, their loyalty is not there with the U.S., which is why Greece and, and Israel had to really affirm their partnership openly. They, they really had to do this. That's because of China and Turkey. Is that because of China and Turkey? There you go. Because everybody in the Middle East right now is positioning. Everybody over here in the U.S., they know about it. Believe me, it's causing people to lose sleep overnight. And I hope that people aren't sleeping on this topic because while well, they're tied up with the Joe Biden, President Trump thing, uh, they have a real formation of things that are happening overseas. And, it, you know, this, this um, the outcome of this thing is going to be so different than what people expected, but it will be without notice. And what, I'm, what I mean by this is, you know, one day we could be sitting talking just like this and all of a sudden, uh, maybe everybody in a certain state, their communication is gone and people said, well, what's happening? What's happening here? Well, they've been hit, right? Because some of the technology, especially the sun missiles that come from Russia, they can be over here in a few minutes. Uh, they can launch from Russia uh, or from uh, uh, serious waters and they can go right down through Morocco and Portugal and hit our coastlines within minutes. We're talking about we're talking about missiles that fly so fast, about a few hundred feet off the surface of the waters, that um, you know there's no stopping that. You can only intercept something like that with a massive force or technology, which is why we're deploying lasers all over the place. By the way, a new type laser has been, I believe, it's going to be shown sometime this week or next week, as as uh, just um, let everybody know that we're up to speed. Now, one of the important things is this, Pastor Paul, Israel. While they're all over the place, I hate to say this, um, if you watch and really calculate the movements that are taking place against Israel, even some of the allies that they're going to are going to cross them. Uh, the, the UAE, they're not going to be on Israel's side. I hate to tell you this, but they're not. Um, and But Israel is going to spread itself out, and we're actually going to begin to see this. Um, they're not going to listen to, uh, or it's almost like they're going to be deaf to hear common sense things because they're going to be so excited about their plan going forward they're not going to hear anything else they're going to be built up in a bit of ego but um you know we're going to see a, a portion of that demise we don't know how long this process is going to take but there there are people situating themselves all over the world right now uh, just to make sure that nobody can interfere and again even in prophecy nobody interfered with the three and a half years that israel was trampled underfoot now i, I have to keep mentioning that so we can all say sober sober knowing that uh, you know what pastor all half the people that weep between the porch and the altar could be some of the pastors from the u.s and around the world look Looking at Israel when they're under siege, which is going to be heartbreaking. But it does not. See, well, here's the bad part. If people really think, if they don't know prophecy and they don't know about that three and a half years, when Israel is trampled underfoot, you know what they're going to say? God has given up on us. God doesn't care. It's no, exactly what they're going to no. say. So, so if they know the truth and they can still have a heart towards the Jews and Israel and stop speaking against them because, well, I, I give you guys some good advice. You, you can't see advice speaking against Israel or the Jews. Get away from them right. because uh, the Lord himself will fight against such. So get away from those folks. They, they don't like anything that God has instituted. Those are normally the same people who start fights between the saints anyway. Thank so kind of stay away from those folks. Well, that's, and Mike, I'll just throw in there a little bit. As you're right, anti-Semitism is rising as we speak it's getting worse i just saw articles again this morning uh how that there is such an anti-semitic movement going on right now uh, all over the world toward israel and you're right those who do this are generally the same people who bring division in the body of christ they they they, they don't understand what spirit they're of they're working on behalf of the devil without 
even maybe knowing it. I, I don't know how they could not know, but you're so right on that. Mike, here's some more. Look, you, we've, we've got to ask you another question. This is a uh, look. We're hearing every day Mars rover. OK, keeps coming up with these pictures of things that look like maybe old bases on Mars. I mean, can I ask a question? I, I don't know if you can answer it or not. Do we have a a base, a military base already, a space station already on Mars? Do we have that already? Since the break in the 50s, um, there was a break in the 50s and the 60s and 70s and 80s going up to this very day in a space program. And, um, you know, I I think that pretty soon an introduction will be made. Uh, There are two, there are three space programs, three. One, two, three, three space programs. One is public, which is NASA, the one that everybody knows about. Well, but they found out very quickly, right, due to a couple of accidents in in NASA's early years, that if they have an accident scrutinized in front of the public, uh, they're going to call for hearings and everything else. And so what they did was they classified under a black project the rest of, of, of space endeavors. And so it's always been split, which means they never stopped going forward, which is why a lot of people have noticed things moving on the moon. They have noticed uh, anomalies on Mars. They have noticed anomalies out there in space. Um, there are hints on occasion, you know, from crazy people. And believe it or not, the truth is always put in, in the strangest tabloids, the strangest places. But if, if people would look behind the, the headlines in some of these strange tabloids, they would see the truth. Um, there are certain ships that have already been built. There are certain, um, there, there's more than one space station out there. Some people have seen this by their telescopes and everything, but nobody would tell them what, what it was because normally they stay in a type of orbit that's very difficult to see from specific locations on the Earth. And so they never stopped that. Just like here on Earth, they never stopped uh, genetic developments. They also had a split in, in the science community. And so that's why they had certain policies and laws in the White House about chimeras uh, that they could only reach the age of 17 or 18 and they had to be killed or destroyed. But the chimera began to say, no, we're, we're living beings. We want to live also. And all this is documented right there in the White House. You know, if a person is nosy enough, they'll see it. They'll see what was what the chimera said, what they spoke out and said, that they're living beings. Um, but anyway, so we've been doing development in areas like this all over the place. That's just like Germany never stopped their development of um, when they were trying to mix man with several different types of species, including squid. They bought all that research over to the U.S. And um, when they bought that research over to the U.S., it was not only the space program that they were building during that time with with all the Germans, but they were also doing genetic experimentation because the Germans were in their, what, what, their 12th year of genetic experimentation. They had successfully transplanted a human head on a gorilla's body, vice versa. They had successfully transplanted a dog's head on another dog and, and this, that, and the other. So, uh, um, you know, all these things have been taking place. And I tell you, we're deeper into it's a miracle. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. So it's if they were we're not scared to death, it really is. Well, if, we, if, if they were able to now we have genetic splicing. Now, we, you know, and I know Lord knows what, you know, they got laboratories now. I'm talking United States, China, Russia and others. The genetic splicing. We have went into the humanoid world. Let's face it. There's got to be some creatures that have been born or being made or being cloned or whatever else is going on that uh, they're bringing us back into the Nephilim days, the Rephahim days. I mean, do you think how close are we in that area or is that already done? Is there armies underground? Is there is there creatures we can't imagine already been made by man? Um, Pastor, a long time ago, um, it's, it's somewhat of a learned experience that they have. Now, let's just say that man was going along one trek, but there's another, uh, there's another element that man has to deal with here on this earth, right? Let's call them the fallen angels. Let's call them exactly what they are. These guys, they're bound to technology, means they can't return back to the heavens as usual. They can't do that. Uh, they're bound to technology. So they, they have to mine just like we do. They have physical bodies just like we do. They have they have advanced technology. Yes, they do. But what they've been doing all this time, past balls, building up an army. And this army has been underneath the earth. And they have been mingling uh, genetic material from humanity 
which is where people get the abductions from, which is also why in certain abductions people see military personnel. Uh, so with these abductions, they have been mingling genetic tissue from humanity with their known tissue. And so soon enough, uh, soon enough, because they're not allowed, listen, it, these things will not break the barrier of God's word. They can't. They know they can't. So they can't just run up and take, take over mankind. What they will do is go after the iniquitous. None of these things will ever go after the righteous. I'm talking about the real righteous. Now, we can stand up and say, I'm righteous. That doesn't mean you're righteous. Uh, those who obey the Lord are righteous, and they will not go against any of those who obey the Lord. But they are going to cause those people who said no to the Lord to live through hell on earth before they go to hell itself. Oh. And, and, and they know that's what they're going to do because they're waiting on those hours, of, which is why even right now, if you ever notice, and you got to put this thing together, even in some of the wilder stories in the media, whatever the case may be, and all these people with these haunted problems, alien problems, all these different problems, you don't ever hear them talk about Jesus Christ, no, do you? No. You don't ever hear them because what they'll do is they'll start trying, you know, well, let's bring some voodoo something over here and get rid of this spirit and this over here. They don't believe in Christ. And so their torment is only about to begin. It's only about to begin because one day the barrier is going to be gone. And that barrier is God's word that says not yet. It is the restrainer. He who led us will now let until it be taken out of the way, and then that wicked will be revealed. But um, that that barrier is soon to be broken. It's already got holes in it. And, and um, you know, the elite, they're, they're, they're aware of this because they walk with those things every single day. They have a promise with him. And are, half of them are terrified. They're yeah, terrified. I was going to ask you, are, are they afraid? Are, are the elite afraid? Terrified. They're terrified. See, we have Christ, like I have Christ, right. you have Christ, and so if something like that confronted us, even if we were terrified out of our minds, one of the first words out of our mouth would be, Lord Jesus, Jesus. help me, right? Jesus. And so that, that, puts a, that, that puts a barrier with him. But with these guys, they have nothing to call out on, nothing. Can you imagine in your worst nightmare when you called on the name of Jesus? Um, can you imagine not having anything to call on, and you have to endure that nightmare, and then they tell you, you're going to live this life. Or, or we're going to put you in torment right away, right? Because it's, I'll say this is a this is a story. I'll give you guys a story. There are people who defied them, and they aged about thirty years right before everybody's face. So nobody's going to go against them because once a person denies Christ, right, their bodies can no longer be quickened by the Holy Spirit, which means their bodies won't be reserved for the work they have to do for the Lord, which means their bodies are prone to whatever they serve. And because they serve death, death is always upon them. And if that if, if death desires to take them, well, then there it is. That's why Christ took the power of death away from Satan for us. He has, no more, he has no power of death over us, but those who are already dead, they're not alive. No. That's why God is God of the well, living and not the dead. Yeah, they're, they're dead men walking. You know, the, uh, you know, and the Bible says if you, you need to die out to sin, folks. Be, then you become alive in Christ. You know, all right. Amen. Amen. That's a good message uh, from Pastor Paul and Brother Mike. A uh, lot, lot of stuff, as you can see, they talked about. Uh, but one reason I wanted to share this entire interview, folks, was because a lot of what they discussed, they went into greater detail uh, than uh, Paul and I a few shows back. And I cannot remember the title of it. It was two or three shows back. And we were talking about these Nazis that were given clemency and uh, escape the trials of Nuremberg and uh, all of these things that uh, the 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 Nazis have still continued to be doing up until this day in uh, the creatures that are up in Antarctica. That that whole entire show that Paul and I did was fabulous. But uh, Paul and and Mike here went into greater detail about these things. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed that interview, and uh, and I would urge you to check out Mike at Council of Time. I think it's councilloftime.com is his website. Very informative, uh, as you can tell. So, hey, heads up this year as we see all of the things that are transpiring. And, friends, I hate to I hate to call this one early, but, uh, man, I have got uh, some things that I need to tend to. So uh, we didn't really get into the election and, and uh, the DNC this week, how they rejected God once again. It's all about how bad Trump is, nothing about uh, what they want to do. But hopefully this interview with Mike and Paul kind of shaped up the fallen angels, the, the reptilians, the, the deep state, and how 
how they are. So uh, next week we're going to come back uh, firing on all cylinders. And again, I'm sorry I had to rush out of here so quick, but uh, I did want to thank you all for being a part and tuning in tonight. Heads up, looks like we've got uh, some more debris coming in uh, in our near future. So until next week, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, I am old Smokehouse. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut.